I worry for not just five years from now, not just 10 years from now, I'm worried about 50 years from now, 100 years from now. Will my grandchildren, will my great grandchildren and future generations know the privilege of, of owning a dog or cat, owning a horse, riding a horse? Will we have all of these things that have been iconic industries as Americans? Will we be able to afford um, owning a dog or a cat or will it be for the wealthy elite? All of this regulatory reform that really is, is unfounded and unnecessary because the pet industry, the animal agriculture industries are highly regulated already. I say let's enforce the laws we already have. We don't need more laws. But too many people, including our legislators and our lawmakers, are falling for the propaganda that the emotional propaganda that the animal rights movement is pushing forth saying we need stronger regulations to oversee the pet industry and people who are raising animals. And it's absolutely false. Absolutely false. If we have an animal welfare problem, then go after the unscrupulous operators who are not willing to be licensed. That's who we should go after. I'm, like I say, we do not condone abuse of any kind of animals. But what I do not condone at all, what I'm very much opposed to, is also the abuse of those who grow and raise our food. I'm very much opposed to those who are working extremely hard to be in compliance with the, with the laws. There are people who are constantly uh, working to modify their animal enterprise to stay in compliance. And what I see happening is that with all this regulatory reform, the goalpost continues to move with every new regulation. And that's the goal of the animal rights movement is to continue, I'm sorry. And that's the goal of the animal rights movement to continue to move the goalpost until people give up until there's nothing left.